Welcome back to the Centre for Christian Spirituality and to our reflection on the Sunday Gospels that we offer each week. And today we are reflecting on the Gospel of the Feast of Pentecost. We invite you first of all to listen to the text. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. It's, it's interesting, it's clearly um, John's Pentecost in a sense. It's the Holy Spirit being given in a less um, formal way than perhaps it was given at the, at the Feast of Pentecost as we have it in Luke. And really, Jesus is giving to the disciples the authority that he had himself. As the Father has sent me, I send you. And just as the Father sent the Spirit at the baptism, so now Jesus gives them the Spirit. So they're being sent out and they are to, um, to carry on the ministry of Jesus. I like to point out that that word that Jesus breathed on them is the word that is used in the Genesis account that God breathed on Adam and the life came into him. So it's the Spirit of God who is really going to give life to the movement that um, Jesus has begun. So I see that as, um, as, as a, a consolation for the um, apostles, but they're still locking the doors uh, because of the fear of the Jews. So while they are rejoicing, they have not yet um, um, perhaps got over the fear that they had um, before. Yeah. And, and I'd love to pick up on that point in particular yeah. because yeah. I'm quite literal, I've decided. Um, they're all locked in the room with the doors nicely locked because they're so afraid and all of a sudden Jesus appears. And uh, I think to me that what reminds me of this passage is there's a feeling of um, Jesus just brings a totally new way of looking at the world. He just goes right through the doors, the windows, the however, and breathes on them. And somehow or other, it is a new life. It is a new identity, a new way of being. Because the old way, it's as though he's entering kind of a dead, dark, fearful cave, all locked in, and, and there's clear direction. I'm here now, I'm the spirit now. Now go, get out of this space, this locked in room. Mm. Yeah, it fascinates me because it, it just seems uh, a bit of a contrast here, isn't it, Luke in Acts, where Luke, Luke, Luke writes that the apostles seem to be not locked away, but then they are locked away because, yeah, I'm, I'll just get a little bit confused there, but, but this presence, that invitation to, to a new way of of living a new way of, of being in life. And you might just pick up on this for us, David. It's something that interests me. The latter part of that about the forgiveness of sin, who sent you forgive, who sent uh, it's the beginning, it seems, of something that was earlier in John that we reflected on in the last couple of Sundays yes. uh, about being given the ability to do things even greater than I have done. Yes. And this perhaps I, it just, I just think maybe one of those experiences where not only what I have done, but it's, it's a whole new experience for you to, to pick up the work that is mine. And this is certainly a part of it. Yes. Jesus forgave sins, and that's the, the implication in what the words are there. But I think as well as that, um, it, it's really saying that, um, that they have the power on mm. earth to do what Jesus did, mm. just as Jesus preached repented and, and brought people yeah. to the Father, so now they are in a position that they will mm. um, do that as well. Because and, back, yeah. in Matthew, sorry, yeah. back in Matthew, 
It's similar words are used yeah. about the forgiveness of sin. And two chapters later in 16, I think it is, or 18 in yeah. Matthew, uh, it, it, it's the gift that belongs to the community of forgiveness. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I, I think that it's, um, we see it from different perspectives in, in the thing, where we naturally think about sacrament at the yeah. at first glance. Yeah. But I think it's broader than that. Yeah, um, right. And I think each aspect that is there is, is appropriate. Mm. Right, that mm. uh, being given to the apostles, in a sense, is the same as being given to the um, um, to the community. Yeah. Because I think the apostles always have that sense of being the twelve tribes of Israel, yeah. and mm. being given to the community. Mm. I don't think we play that card enough, really. That, no, and uh, and that's why I was keen for you just yeah, to to yeah. mention that, because I think that's important for us uh, to uh, yeah. begin to understand that. Well, we invite you now to um, look at your at the text and draw out your own reflections and see what the text means to you. In the light of the comments that we have made and that you have um, drawn from the text yourself, we invite you to listen to the reading again. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where Jesus had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Yes, it's a, it is a Pentecost. And I think um, to me it, um, it points to the Spirit working through us. And, uh, I mentioned an earlier time, and I'll mention it again, that we do have these inspirations that come mm -hmm. in our lives. And uh, I think certainly some of them are inspirations that well up from the spirit within. And uh, I think we need to be more alert to them. And when we consider that they are from the spirit, to actually engage in them. They're not always things that you have to do. But I think if you feel that the spirit is calling you to do it, there may be a reason that we don't actually know ourselves. So I think that practicing to be alert to the Spirit, inspiring me in that way. And for me, it's leave the room, leave the fear, leave the safe little environment. I'm sending you. So be willing to go, yeah. willing to get, go, move. And the words to receive the Holy Spirit, I, mm. I, I guess, I went, what does it really mean mm. to me in the living of my life? Because I've received that gift precisely on a number of occasions. Yes. But what difference has it made? Has it convicted me more of the presence of the risen one with me? Has it challenged me to, as you say, Virginia, just to, to get out from behind the closed door and uh, to be that presence? I think each time we receive the Spirit, and we, we use that expression, it's, it's more like a relationship than the Spirit is a thing. I mean, if, if it's a thing, if you've received it, you've already got it. Yeah. So you don't receive no, it again. Yeah. But uh, I think if you look upon it as the Spirit working, that in yeah. baptism we are, the Spirit draws us uh, towards the Father, mm -hmm. and then in confirmation draws us mm -hmm. into a new relationship. Mm -hmm. And I think what's being said here is that the Spirit is being given um, to enable witness, to yeah. enable people to go on and carry on the mission of Jesus. It yeah, feeds that, that um, yeah. breathing new life into something, is, yeah, new breath, yeah. new... That's right. That's right. And we call new it lungs. Prison, that's right. Yeah. 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 That's right. the one who was yeah. Yeah. Mm. Well, we invite you now to try to draw something practical out of the, uh, the text that we have been reading so the text can overflow into your life. Just take a minute to do that.
St. Paul said that I can do anything in the one who, with the one who strengthens me and therefore we should call on the Lord to ensure that we actually do put into practice what we've decided, knowing that we need the strength and the courage that the Lord gives. Thank you for being with us here at the Centre, the Centre for Christian Spirituality. Uh, we offer this reflection weekly so that we hope that you will join us again in the future. Uh, we normally conclude, as we conclude today, by a reading from the Mass of the Feast, the Feast of, the, of Pentecost. O oh God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole Church in every people and nation, Pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth, and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed, fill now once more the hearts of believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever.